What is up everybody, my name is Heiken and this is the Vanser Gretza. All right, so this mouse is actually really popular right now, and I mean, I can see why. Look at the thing, it's beautiful. It's also a very, very close shape to the Final Mouse Starlight 12 Medium, and it's pretty similar to the G Pro Wireless as well. So a lot of people are really liking it because of that. It's a lot less expensive than these mice by a pretty good margin. This egg shape is also pretty safe, meaning that it fits a lot of different hand sizes and grip styles. It's also got this super dope playing card theme. It's got hearts and diamonds on the mouse itself with spades and clubs joining hearts and diamonds on the box. It's just a really, really cool look for this mouse. In the box, you get the mouse, a braided and very flexible USB type A to USB type C cable, a wireless dongle, an extra set of gray PTFE feet, and a manual. The mouse comes in a red and gray theme just like mine, a blue and gray theme, a off-white and green theme, and a pink gradient theme as well, all of them costing $80 plus shipping, available from a variety of retailers. I got mine personally off of Addis Inc. Now these mice look really cool, but how is the performance? This shape is symmetrical, so that makes this an ambidextrous mouse. It's also on the smaller end of medium. I'll go ahead and put the measurements for the mouse up on the screen for you right now. Feel free to pause these if you want to have a longer look. And again, the shape is very similar to the Final Mouse Starlight 12 Medium, the G Pro Wireless, and the Razer Viper Ultimate. This egg shape has a really good palm grip and also a really good relaxed claw and even more tense claw grip. However, fingertip grip was just all right for me. I personally didn't love it for that. Just holding the mouse in my hand, fingertip grip was all right, but in actual practice, I found that I just couldn't get a good grip on this mouse fingertip anyways. I was missing shots left and right. I, I really didn't feel like I was very accurate with this mouse, which is the reason why you didn't see any frag clips in the intro like I normally do with mouse reviews because I just didn't do very well with this mouse. I think the hump is just a little bit too far forward and the slope down from the hump towards the back of the mouse is just a little bit too long and gradual for this to really be a great fingertip option. So if you're a fingertip gripper like myself, I'd consider avoiding this mouse. I have medium hands personally. If you have big hands, you might be able to get away with a fingertip grip on this mouse but I would pursue other options that are more specialized for a fingertip grip. The problem with egg shapes in general for me is that they're jack of all trades, but master of none. They don't really do one of these grips really, really well enough. If I was a claw gripper, I probably wouldn't love this mouse because I think that, again, the slope back from the hump is just too gradual for me to get a really, really perfect claw grip. You can definitely get a claw grip on here, but it's not a perfect claw grip. The palm grip, I think, was very good, but the fingertip grip, again, is, is an L for me as well. The mouse also has a really respectable weight for a wireless mouse coming in at 68 grams on my scale. However, that will fluctuate just by a gram or two, depending on how much you have the battery charged. The sensor here is a 3370. I had no performance issues, no latency issues, nothing like that. So if you're worried about this being a wireless mouse and causing additional latency that you wouldn't get on a wired mouse, uh, don't be. Wireless technology nowadays can keep up with the wired mice just fine. Now, when I first took this mouse out of the box, I was a bit surprised to see gray PTFE feet instead of the white that we normally get. I really don't know why these are gray. They might have just preferred the gray color since the bottom of the mouse is white and they wanted the feet to stand out a little bit more. Or maybe they changed some of the chemicals in the feet. I I'm really not sure. But regardless, performance-wise, these feet are actually pretty good. They're a little bit too scratchy for my liking, so I'd say they're pretty average as far as PTFE feet go. I think that this would be worth getting some hyperglides on here if you can find them. Um, but yeah, they're pretty serviceable, I would say. The left and right mouse buttons here are Omron 20 mils, and they feel pretty par for the course for Omron 20 mils. These are in a ton of different mice. They really don't feel great, but they don't feel bad either. I would say that they're like a perfect middle ground switch. They're just fine. 
They're on the lighter end of medium with an unfortunate amount of pre and post travel. It's not enough to really mess you up in game, but it definitely is noticeable if you're super nitpicky about it like I am. When you press these down though, there is basically zero left and right mouse movement, partially because of the little wall that's on the outside of each of them, but there's really not a lot of lateral movement. So if that really bothers you in a mouse, you're in luck here. Side buttons here also feel pretty good. There's not an alarming amount of pre and post travel, but there is a little bit. We also have a DPI button on the top with an LED underneath that. You can kind of see it on the inside of the mouse, although it's not a super prominent feature. On the bottom of the mouse itself, we have a storage slot for the USB wireless receiver, which is always great to see on the mouse itself, the power switch and a button for the polling rate, and the LED slash lift off distance. It's really, really nice to see a way to change these on the mouse itself, especially because the software experience here isn't amazing, it's just fine, we'll talk about that in a second. The scroll wheel feels nice, it's on the looser side, and I actually really like the way that they kind of have it grooved. I think it feels really good on your finger. The click on the scroll wheel itself also feels pretty good. Here's a sound test for all the buttons on this mouse. Now, as far as build quality goes, I actually don't have any concerns here, despite this mouse being riddled with holes across like 85% of its surface. Now, of course, if you slam the mouse around and squeeze it a ton, yes, it is going to creak. But during regular use, I had no concerns. One thing that does bother me, though, is the paint job and the coating, or I guess the lack thereof. I'm really not sure if there is one. But with the paint job, there are a couple spots on the mouse the red shell specifically, where I can kind of see some white underneath where the red paint didn't get to all the way. It's on the front of the mouse underneath the left and right triggers, so it's not really super noticeable, but I know it's there and it bothers me. And this lack of coating or whatever coating they did put on after the paint just doesn't feel very good in your hand. It just feels kind of cheap if you ask me. I would expect a little bit more out of an $80 mouse. I, I really do understand them not wanting to add a ton of weight with an extra coating, but at the same time, this mouse just feels kind of cheap. The software here is pretty basic. You can change button mapping, DPI levels, the color of the LED, and view battery percentage. There's also a macro system. You have three profiles you can change between in the software. Nothing groundbreaking here in the software department, but it gets the job done. All right, so should you check this mouse out? Well, I think it's really good for palm grippers. It's all right for claw grippers. And fingertip grippers like myself will just be over here in the corner waiting for the Grex the Mini, if that's even a thing. I don't think that this mouse feels super premium either, which might turn some people away, especially since this costs $80. But you also have to remember that this mouse is imported from China, so it's just going to cost a little bit more due to import fees and stuff like that. I think the performance was really good and this design is just super cool. So if you have a compatible grip and you don't mind the mouse feeling a little bit cheap at that $80 price point, then you might wanna consider checking this one out. There's a link down in the description. All right, everybody, that's gonna go ahead and do it for me today. Thank you very much for watching until the end of the video. Remember to hit that like button and that subscribe button on your way out, and I will see you all in the next one. Peace.